The police showed up, they pulled this meat substance out of the pipes, and they sent it to a mortuary where a pathologist looked at it and said, this is meat. It's human meat. An experienced plumber named Mike came out to Cranley Gardens. He went around to the side of the building and he opened up a drain cupboard. He saw wads of hair and napkins and other things kind of mashed together, clogging up the pipes. And so he reached in and he began pulling this stuff out and putting it in a bucket right next to him. And then after he had cleared the majority of the obstruction, he reached his arm all the way into this pipe to feel around to see if there was anything in there that he just couldn't see. His hand hit a major blockage. And so he moved his fingers around to try to feel what it was, but he couldn't tell. It was something that was fairly soft, but there were some hard things inside of it, like sticks or rods. So he grabbed a handful of this blockage and he pulled his arm back out of the pipe. He opened his hand and what he was holding looked like ground meat, but it wasn't any meat he had ever seen before. And inside of this fleshy substance looked like little bits of bone. He had never seen meat be the reason for a blockage. And so this whole situation just seemed really strange. And he decided, you know, it's late. I'll just come back tomorrow with my supervisor so he can see what this is too. And and as he's walking, two of the residents of this complex come out and they say, hey, did you fix the blockage? You know, what was it? And Mike would say, no, he hadn't. And then he just kind of blurted out that there was meat in the pipes. And then one of these two residents says, well, I bet people are just flushing their Kentucky Fried Chicken down the drains. That's what's causing it. And Mike looked at him and he was like, yeah, maybe. And then he just turned around, got in his truck and he drove away. Early the next morning, Mike and his supervisor came back to Cranley Gardens and they went around to the side of the building. They undid that cap and then Mike reached down inside expecting to feel this blockage, but where it should have been, there was nothing. Somebody had cleared the pipes. And so Mike and his supervisor are looking at each other and Mike is like, there's no way that cleared on its own. But the men decide, you know what? Maybe it did just kind of slip through and clear itself. So let's just continue the process and make sure each of the apartment buildings, their individual pipe is unobstructed. And when they checked these pipes, they found all of them were clear except for one, apartment number 23, whose pipe was blocked up with more of this meaty substance. Mike and his partner were already very suspicious of the fact that someone had snuck out here in the middle of the night and cleared the pipe. And now they're finding more of this weird meat substance coming from a particular apartment. And so the whole situation just seemed off. And so they told the landlord that somebody else had to come out and deal with this. And the landlord, after finding out there was meat jammed in the pipes, got really freaked out and called the police. The police showed up, they pulled this meat substance out of the pipes and they sent it to a mortuary where a pathologist looked at it and said, this is meat. It's human meat. And in particular, the stuff that was pulled out of apartment number 23's pipes is that of a human neck. So the police go back to Cranley Gardens. They go up to apartment number 23. They knock on the door. And when the door opens, they're hit with this overwhelming stench of just rotting flesh. And standing in the doorway of this apartment is this guy who's in his late 30s, early 40s, who introduces himself as Dennis Nielsen. And they say, hey, Dennis, can we have a look around your apartment? And he says, you know, why? And they say, well, we found human remains in your pipes. And Dennis immediately says, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. That's horrible. But the police are not buying it. And they say, you know what, Dennis, tell us where the rest of the body is. And at this, Dennis suddenly went expressionless, emotionless, and he just turns around and he points into his bedroom and he says, it's in two plastic bags in my closet. And so before the police go into his apartment to go inspect these bags, they say, Dennis, are there any other bodies in your apartment that we should know about? And Dennis sighs and he looks up to the ceiling and says, yeah, there's about 15 or 16 here. So after Dennis was arrested and brought to the station, he told them his horrible story. It had all started five years earlier in 1978 when Dennis was 33. He was at a pub having some drinks by himself when a teenager came into the bar and attempted to buy an alcoholic drink and he was denied service. And so Dennis pulled him aside and said, hey, I'd be happy to give you a drink at my apartment. It's right down the road. And the young man whose name was Steven was very excited about this and said, great, let's go. Once they arrived back and they were up in Dennis's apartment, the pair had lots of drinks and they were having fun and laughing. And then at some point the pair climbed into bed together. The next morning, when when Dennis got up, his new friend, Stephen, was still sleeping right next to him. He knew as soon as Stephen woke up, he would see this as a one night stand and he would just leave. He would not stick around and remain friends with Dennis. And Dennis just did not like that idea. And he saw the necktie that Stephen had been wearing was on the ground. He fashioned it into a noose and then he climbed back on the bed, got on top of Stephen's chest and he looped the tie around his neck and then he pulled it as tight as he could. Dennis said Stephen just seemed to give up. He looked up at Dennis and knew he was 
wasn't going to get this off and that Dennis was determined to kill him. As he's looking at Stephen, he realized he wasn't dead. He was just unconscious. And so Dennis goes into the kitchen and he gets this huge plastic bucket and he fills it up with water and he sets it in the middle of his kitchen floor. And then he gets a bunch of kitchen chairs and he lines them up like a table right in front of this bucket of water. And then he drags Stephen's body into the kitchen and he lays him on his back on these chairs. And then he grabbed that bucket of water and he slid it right underneath Stephen's head. And then he pressed the young man's face straight down so his head went backwards until his mouth and his nose were under the water. And after several minutes, the bubbles stopped coming to the surface and Stephen was dead. And he would tell police it was a very bizarre experience because Stephen still looked like he was alive. Dennis realized, you know, the life he had before he killed Stephen was now over. He had a new life and he didn't really know how to handle it. And so the first thing he thought to do was to clean Stephen. And then Dennis climbed into bed with him and laid with him. And he would tell police as he laid there, he suddenly felt overjoyed. Stephen was not going to leave him. He was going to stay here as long as Dennis wanted him to. Dennis realized he had to find a way to hide Stephen's body in his apartment so no one could find him. And that's when he remembered he had a loose floorboard in his apartment. And so he went over to the loose floorboard, he pulled it up and he saw there was a space under the floors. And so he pulled a couple more boards up and then he grabbed Stephen's body and he attempted to force him down into the space. But by now, Stephen's body had begun to stiffen up from rigor mortis and so as Dennis is trying to force him down in there his arms were not allowing him to go down into that small space so Dennis took Stephen's body and he propped him up against the wall in his bedroom so the body is against the wall rigid standing up with its arms up over its head and Stephen's eyes were still open and then after that Dennis just got in bed and fell asleep and then the next morning when Dennis got up there was Stephen still up against the wall with his hands in the air looking down at him Dennis grabbed Stephen's body and put it on the ground and he began contorting him until he was small enough that he could pack him down under his floor. And then once he was under there, he just put the boards on top and went about his daily life. And for the next couple of days, he totally forgot about Steven. But a week after putting him under the floor, Dennis decided he missed Steven and he wanted to see him again. And so one night he opened up the floorboards, he looked down and there was Steven. And Dennis would say, it looked like he was dirty. So he pulled him out of the floor and he gave him another bath. And then after he had cleaned Stephen, he pulled him out of the water, he dried him off and he put him in the chair. And then Dennis took a bath himself in the same water he had just used to clean Stephen. After a long soak in this tub, Dennis finally got out. He toweled himself off. He redressed Stephen and then he forced him back onto the floorboards and covered him up again. And he would remain there for the next seven months until Dennis finally decided to dispose of him by burning him in a bonfire outside of their apartment building. And then after the body was completely incinerated and gone, Dennis remembered thinking, I can't believe I just got away with murder. And so he would do it again and again, killing at least 15 young men from North London, all by strangulation or by drowning or a combination of the two. And after he killed them, he would keep them stashed in his apartment for months at a time, in his closet, in his cabinets, in his bed. He liked to periodically take them out to spend time with them. He would tell police he found corpses to be beautiful. He was fascinated by them. But eventually, in 1983, he had so many bodies stashed all over his apartment that he knew he really needed to expedite getting rid of them. And so he began cutting them up and trying to force them down his drain, which eventually clogged the pipes. And so when Mike the plumber showed up and discovered this meaty substance in the pipes, and Dennis overheard him talking about it, that night after Mike was gone, Dennis had gone outside and attempted to clear the rest of the remains from the pipes. But he wasn't aware there were still remains stuck in the pipe that led to his specific apartment. Dennis Nielsen confessed to killing 15 young men and attempting to kill at least seven others, and he was sentenced to life in prison. Dennis never showed any remorse, nor did he show any desire to want to be free again. He actually said he deserved to be in jail for what he did. In 2018, Dennis Nielsen would die in prison at the age of 72. Just know that I really appreciate your support, and until next time, that's going to do it. See ya.